I speak to you in the name of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a beautiful simplicity to Mark's resurrection account, which we hear this morning. And there are four timeless truths that the angel communicated to the women in their moment of terror and amazement. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He is not here. He has been raised. He goes ahead of you. You will see him. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Yes, we are. We may not know it and we may not be able to articulate it as such, but if there's one thing I can confirm after a dozen years of ministry without a single shadow of a doubt, it's that we are all looking for Jesus. We're looking for the promise of life and hope, the lasting sense of peace and joy that he alone can offer. We're looking to be set free from that which holds our hearts captive, the pain, the shame, the fear, the anger, the worry, the insecurity, whatever it is for you. We're looking for forgiveness, mercy, and healing, a meaningful way out, a purpose way forward in life. We long to be understood, to be accepted, and to be included. We long for grace and strength and courage, and we long for the hope and promise of redemption. And Jesus, who we call both Savior and friend, is the one, the only one, who can bring all these things to bear in our lives. Again, we might not know it and we might not be able to articulate it as such, but we are all, without a doubt, looking for Jesus. He's not here. He has been raised. So often we go looking for the free gifts of God in all the wrong places. We look for meaning and purpose and fulfillment in old burial grounds. We look for temporary fixes and short bursts of satisfaction in what always turn out to be empty tombs. If you have been raised with Christ, St. Paul tells us, seek the things that are above where Christ is. What if today we could shake off our grave clothes and let go of whatever anger or resentment we've been harboring, whatever old grudges have been weighing on our hearts and minds? What if we could let go of our self-deprecation and quit playing the comparison game and be fully alive in the beauty of our own unique humanity, fully comfortable with both who and whose we are? What if we could commit to the radical virtues of kindness and compassion for ourselves and for others and seek only to be bearers of joy and good news, allowing God to operate from the very center of who we are? Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has been raised. He goes ahead of you. We often worry, obsess even about the future about what we think either will or won't happen, about how things might play out to our advantage or our disadvantage, about whether we'll be ready, whether we'll have enough, whether we'll finally prove ourselves worthy. And what this way of life lacks on a very basic level is trust. Trust in God's plan, trust in God's provision, trust in God's great love for us. We ask, as the women did in Mark's Gospel, Who will roll away the stone for us? But the transformational truth, the new resurrection reality that is communicated to us at Easter is this. No matter what the day ahead might bring, no matter how challenging or how complicated our lives might become, no matter what pain or struggle we might face, our Lord will enter into it with us. He goes before us even. Anglican theologian William Temple once described Christ as our spiritual dragoman. A dragoman in the world of travel is someone who goes ahead of his party, off the beaten path often, to clear the way for safe passage, to scout out danger and to prepare a place for those who will come after. Mountains can be moved and monumental changes can be made with God's help And by God's grace, he is tending the soil and the tomorrows of all of our lives so that we might see new growth and new life, sometimes where we least expect it. You will 
see him. What a blessed assurance. And this is perhaps the most compelling thing about the new resurrection reality. There's certainly no containing and there's often no explaining the real scope and power of this saving event. For over 2,000 years now, Christians have gathered on Easter morning and, by the way, on 51 other Sunday mornings in the year to tell this story, to share this good news. Over 2 billion people will pray this day in the words our Lord taught us in hundreds of different languages. And we will do so because in ways large and small, we have seen Jesus and we wish to see him more. We've seen how God can bring deep beauty and transformative love and redemption out of experiences of brokenness and despair. We've seen the cross take shape in our own lives. We've seen him at work in and through others who give of themselves, sometimes at great risk to care for the sick, the needy and the poor in his name, to welcome and encourage the strangers and the outcast and to communicate God's amazing love indiscriminately to all they meet. And we've seen him show up for us at the times when we've most needed him to remind us in his most perfect, clear sighted, tender way that the stones are still movable, that the abundant life he promised is still available and that our future is shot through with limitless Holy Spirit possibility. We have seen him and we will indeed see him again and again and again. So do not be afraid, brothers and sisters. Certainly do not lose heart and do not give up hope, not for one solitary moment. You will see him. A very happy Easter to you all. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.